G'day guys, what's cracking? It's Ralph here and we're in this beautiful environment because I want to talk to you about the Z5 and this video is for those of you that want to get the very most out of this camera. So I'm going to run through what it can do, how it does it. There'll be a reference to a bunch of other videos I've made throughout which you'll be able to find up here at the end of the video or potentially down in the description. So I'd encourage you to watch all the way through as we build in the complexity and necessities of what you need to know about this camera so you can get the most out of it. Because you probably bought it for a special thing, you wanna take photos of your kids, or when you go on holidays, you wanna do that. And there's so much more you can do with this that just with a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of know-how, a little bit of navigation through the settings, you'll be up and running in no time to be able to take the best photos you want to take in any scenario that you're in. Basically, it'll get you more passionate about photography. So let's go. So let's start super basic. You operate your camera with your right hand because it gives you access to everything. Apologies for those who are left-handed, but the camera manufacturers, they just don't care about you in that way. Use your left hand to secure and stabilize your camera. So you don't need to hold it out here, place it underneath, bit of a palm under the hand, obviously with larger lenses, you hold the lens, you hold right at the end of the lens actually on larger lenses, but you hold underneath the base, keeps it stable. You're not stabilizing with this hand because this hand's moving, right? Don't stabilize with this hand. Don't do all the old click, click, click. Just stabilize like here. I put an L bracket on mine and recommend an L bracket. It goes down the side and along. It does two main functions and you can see up here what it does, but you can basically uh, mount it on a tripod like this and then take it off and mount it like this. But also the, uh, the key straps that you can put on it allow your camera to hang down when it's on a strap rather than like this against your hip and pointing out. Batteries go in the bottom and the key to the batteries is use Nikon batteries. Why? because this error message comes up if you try and use any other batteries. There are exceptions to the rule, but I would recommend paying that extra couple of bucks for the Nikon batteries, and you'll get more life out of it, and you'll increase the life of your camera that might otherwise be compromised. You turn your camera on with this little switch here. I know it doesn't take a YouTube video to work out how to turn the camera on. You've got this shutter button. Press the shutter button halfway down and it focuses. I would recommend going to this video and changing your back button focus right here. What that means is halfway down on the shutter button you focus and then all the way down to take the shot. What you back button focus is you use this to focus which means you can move the camera around, you can move the focal point around and wherever it uh, shoots on is here not dependent on having you hold your finger halfway here. So if you have something that's moving it's super handy to have it on your back button. It allows your front button just to shoot photos when necessary. Might be something you want to play around with, but I'd encourage you to, uh, to have a look at it. Now the menu button, the menu button's right here, and you need your menu button because it accesses all of these interesting options. So you can scroll down on the left hand rig, and it gives you those different options. When you like one that you need, we're not gonna go format memory card, that's way too scary. Let's go up to shooting, we go playback menu, you select with your thumb panel up and down, and when you get to one that you want, you scroll across, and then once you get to the one that you wanna select, you press the OK button in the middle. Now your camera comes with a setup menu already, so you're good to go, but there are fine tuning tweaks you might wanna make the most of, and this video at the top of the screen will help you do just that. Once you start to use your camera, you wanna have control of your ISO button. It's this little button right up here, right near your shutter button and your video record button. If you wanna access your ISO, you hold that down, and you can determine what your ISO is with the back wheel. If you wanna to go to auto, you keep your, you hold that button down, and you use your front, and one click goes to auto, one click off auto, one click auto, one click off auto, and that auto is when you're shooting something in, uh, when it goes from light to dark to light to dark, and you just need your camera to compensate for that difference in shadow and highlight, you use auto ISO. So it's great for surfing photography, or perhaps wildlife photography, or even if your kids are running through something and there's sunlight and there's shade, and there's sunlight and there's shade, whack it on auto uh, ISO, and you will have clean, crisp results in no time. There's your video record button, which you can get programmed to do other things when you're on camera mode, rather than video mode. You need it on video mode to take video and over here is your exposure compensation that works in the modes of p a and s it doesn't work on manual and that enables you when you have a scene set it enables you to go darker or lighter and you simply hold that down and use your back wheel to control where that will be and you go one way or the other to overcompensate or to undercompensate and if you play around with that when you have it on those mode settings you'll see what i mean and and how it works 
I, I never use it because I use ISO and the other functions. Let's talk about mode buttons. Your camera works in a series of modes and your modes are here on this little dial. So let's go around to P. P means programmed automatic. I would suggest starting there when you pull this out of the box and you don't have any clue what you're doing, put P on and you'll enjoy the camera. If you really then want to get more out of the camera, you don't need to jump straight to M, you then simply go to S. S is shutter speed priority. And shutter speed priority is really important when you're taking photographs of something that's moving or something where you want to capture movement. And the basic idea behind shutter priority is you get to set the shutter speed. So if something's moving very fast and you want to capture its action without it being blurry into the high shutter speed, if you want to take photo of water and make it milky, smooth and silky, then you need a long shutter speed. And once you set the shutter speed, your camera will do the rest of setting the other settings in a complementary fashion to your shutter speed. Aperture, the A, we go to A, A works the same. Aperture is when you want to have something stand out from its background, right? So at the moment, I'm an aperture of 4.5 and these trees are slightly blurry and the ones right at the back are very blurry. And so your aperture does that. The lower the aperture number, which is dependent on what lens you put on the camera, the lower your aperture number, the more blurry something will be. The higher your aperture number, which is like F18 or F20, everything will be in focus to a degree depends on your specific lens that you're using. But if you're wanting to take a nice shot of the kids and you're wanting them just to pop out of the background, just like, wow, or there's that special birthday thing where you're like, I want the cake to really be clear and everything else to be blurry. You use your aperture and you go to a low aperture number. And then we go to M. M, you can learn how to shoot in manual, which means you have full control in 10 minutes. And I've got a video up here that you can click to afterwards or even right now, and then come back to this one which will give you a step-by-step, -step, really clear instructions on how you learn how to shoot any camera in manual. Then you have your customized settings. You have U3, U2, U1, and you can program them in the customized settings function to uh, basically, if you're going astro or you go to kids party or you're wanting to take waterfall shots and they might have different settings required, you can just have them customized. The once you go to that customize, you can then alter the settings, but that will be the base setting rate. So when you go back to it, always reset to whatever you set it to. And then you have auto. You're better than that. You don't need auto. I know you feel like you do. You don't. Retire it, learn how to shoot manual. You will thank me forever. Or thank yourself. Thank the camera, thank someone. No auto, you're better than that. If you're enjoying the content so far, I would love it if you could just subscribe. You can uh, like the like button down there, or there's even, even a thanks button where you can just donate a couple of bucks to the channel and every little bit helps. But I would love for you to journey forward with me as we make more videos, so the subscribe would mean the most to me. On the side of the camera, there's this little button here. See that little button? And that button, when you press it, it changes how you see your image. So basically, if we turn this on, and we press, at the moment I'm on the back screen priority. If I press it once, it goes to the EVF, which is electronic viewfinder. If I press it again, it goes back to monitor only. And then if I press it again, it goes to automatic switch, which means depending on whether my eye blocks this sensor, see that? It goes to EVF and to screen. And so I like to have it set on this. So regardless of whether I'm looking at it through a tripod, it works. Or if I'm looking at it through the EVF, it works. And sometimes it just drives me crazy. And then you just press this to turn it off. This little dial on the other side, the plus or minus, this is if you're struggling to see it clearly and your eyes are a little bit, um, well, like mine, they're sharp. And so you use this button to focus in. So you look through the EVF, use this button very slightly to see, make sure the image you're taking is as clear to your eye as it needs to be so you can get the very most out of it. You can also change the brightness that your EVF works at or your back screen reverts at. And the temptation is to go, let's go as bright as possible so we can see it as clearly as possible. What you need to know is you'll then have a tendency to think that what you see with your eye is the actual photo being taken, but what you see with your eye is brighter than the photo being taken. So I would just caution against that. On super bright days where the screen is hard to read, bump the brightness up just for those particular moments and you can put it on one of your immediate information um, mode 
mode options right there. But generally, I'd, um, I'd recommend just f sitting at about middle range, unless of course the brightness hurts your eyes when you look through it, and then reduce it to where you need it to be. But just be, uh, be aware of that, that it can be, um, you can get home and go, why are my photos not the same photos that I saw when I looked through it? And that can be the reason, because your brightness is incoherent with the actual photograph that you're taking. Your screen is actually a touch screen, but it's not always on. So at the moment it's off and you can't be a touch screen. But this little button here, if you press that, it turns it on and you can position a focus point just by touching and that means it will be focused there. You can actually change it to touch AF which means autofocus. So if you touch here the autofocus pinpoints where your shot's going to be and then if you press it again you can actually take the photo by pressing on the screen. And so it will focus in on whatever you want to focus in on and then if you've had enough of that you simply turn it off and you're ready to go again. See this display button right here? The display button changes what your display looks like when you're shooting and it gives you different functions. You can use your settings through this video just up here somewhere to change what your display button looks like. But also when you're on playback mode, I've got a playback mode, here's the last photo I took, you can change through the display so you can see what settings you used and what other information or metadata is integral to your image. And obviously here you also have the video to photo button I would suggest when you go to video, because you don't use video primarily with this camera, so have your video settings all set up at say 24 frames a second um, at 4K, 2160 is 4K. Make sure your shutter speed number, so one over 50 is twice that of what your frames per second is. So if you're shooting on 2160 slash 24, that's 24 frames a second. So you want your shutter speed to be one over 50 because 50 is pretty much double 24. Just like if you have a higher range, like you go 60 frames a second, you want your shutter speed to be what? One over 120, well done. If you don't want to take up a lot of space, you'll go down to um, uh, 1080p. So that's another setting here. And your ISO around 400 and your aperture as low as it'll go. And that will just set you up that if you ever want to just flip to the video, you're good to go. You could also put your ISO on automatic. Again, remember, auto, auto, it's the same on film. Uh, and that'll set you up when you're, you're like, oh, the kids are doing something, or I've just seen this cool wildlife thing, or this cool, you can just flick it over and you know you're pretty much ready to go and you'll only have to tweak the settings rather than be like, ah, what's it doing? Or afterwards, because you'll, you'll do it. And then afterwards you'll be like, oh, definitely should have changed the settings on that. Why did I not think about that? You didn't think about it because none of us think about it because it's exciting in the moment. <laughs> and the disc button also has the same amount of effect on your EVF. So you can look through your EVF and use the disc button to change what data you're seeing in the EVF. It's pretty cool like that. And the things you can do with this, you can have a horizon leveling, you can have your histogram which shows you how much shade and highlights you have. You can have all your settings and don't be intimidated. You go, man, there's a lot of settings. I need it all there to look good and feel good about myself as a photographer. Me, um, my personal approach is minimalist as possible. Just give me only what I need because otherwise it's a distraction. And there's plenty of options to be distracted by with this function. It has this cool little eye button here. The eye button is fascinating. When you press the eye button, it gives you an instantaneous options on your screen. That's touch screen that you can choose or you can navigate using the joystick here or the thumb print here backwards and forwards, you can navigate what your eye menu see. Use the camera and work out what options you're using most and set your eye up to do that rather than going, I'm just gonna use what Ralph uses. I'll show you what I use, but I use different functions to others because of the way my photography rolls out. Yeah, access the info button by simply pressing the info button and surprisingly, and to turn it off, you press it again. So let's go into it and I'll show you what my settings are. So first of all, let's look at the release mode. That's what I have. If we press okay, it gives you these options. So you have single frame, which is one shot before the camera goes okay. So you can hold your finger down on the shutter release, but it's just one shot. Then you can go um, to long, which is four, three, two, or one shots a second. And we simply go I to get back to where we were. And, and high, high is 4.5 frames a second. 11, or we can access our self timer by pressing down and that gives us two, five, 10, 20 seconds or the nine shots. So you might wanna take a family portrait 
and you might, you know people are gonna blink and stuff, and so you guys, you might set it up and go, guys, in 20 seconds, I'm gonna take a photo, and my camera's gonna take nine photos in a row, so hopefully all of us will be smiling and with our eyes open looking at the camera with at least one of them. So it's kind of a little funky little feature to have um, uh, at your disposal with that, um, and that's what this little button does down here. My second option is silent photography. This is perfect for event photography or wildlife photography where you need to take the click out of the camera. So if you turn that on, every time you press the shutter button, you will have no sound at all. You just need to be careful that you realize you're taking a photo rather than you're not. Then we go to focus mode and there's three options here. There's autofocus stationary, autofocus continuous or manual focus, which if you go manual focus, you also have to put manual focus on on your lens. Continuous is for things that are moving. You wanna hold the focus of them wherever they move. A single point autofocus is when you're taking a photo of a flower or a tree or a landscape or something that's not moving and you don't need your focus point to move even if that is say moving around in the breeze. Now we go to the autofocus area mode and you have a variety of options. So if we go right to here, you can choose your single point and you can move it around with your thumb button or with the joystick. If we go back and we can use the um, touch screen to access the info mode. So we can also go dynamic area autofocus. And what that looks like is this. So it focuses on your subject, but also use, uses those dots around as further information points of focus to ensure that that which falls in that space should be in focus. Go back to our area focus mode. We can go wide area, which looks like this. So it's a nice big box. If you have a larger car or something you need to focus in on, it might be a birthday cake. You're like, yep, that suits well. You move it around with the thumb pad or with the joystick. We go back into area focus mode. We have a large one and that looks like this. So it's much bigger. Again, go back in and then we have our auto area focus mode. So when you focus in on the shot, it will pick up what it feels is most in focus. To make your autofocus work, you really need to make sure you're exposed correctly. You can expose correctly by the little plus and minus. So as you can see, that's overexposed and this is underexposed. That is well exposed. And when I push the focus button, it will pick up what it thinks are the primary um, subject points. Now, this is how you access face and eye detect. So if you go into menu, custom, autofocus, auto area face eye detection. You can turn on face and eye detection there. You can just turn on face detection. If you take a lot of animal shots, you can turn it off there. On You can turn it on there, or you can just turn the whole lot off. I usually keep mine on face and eye detect. So if someone's face is there, it will automatically focus on the eyes and the face. If they're too far away, it will just focus on the face. So we get out of that by simply pressing the back button and then menu which gets us out and we can press info to go back to where we were. So that's AF area mode and you can choose which one. So if you're taking a lot of people and a lot of things like that, I would suggest the auto area, auto focus mode with face and eye detect on. If you're taking a lot of photos of say a landscape or other things in nature, I would go this, uh, but you choose what you like and have a, a play with them. And next is our metering. And metering is great for when you're taking something that is light on dark or dark on light and you just want the exposure to concentrate on what the subject is. So at the moment, your camera is set to matrix metering, which means it takes the average of the lightest part of the photograph and the darkest part of the photograph and exposes according to that. You can go center weight metering, which starts to focus on where your focus point is, or you can go spot metering, which focuses on exactly the subjects you want. So if you're shooting a photo of the moon, you wanna use spot metering because the moon, whatever its background is, is gonna be much brighter and you wanna set your exposure based on the moon. And then highlight weighted metering is an option should you choose to use it. Then we go to interval timer shooting. So this is great if you're shooting a uh, time lapse or you're doing star trails, uh, it's used for that. I use that a lot. And you have white balance. I always keep mine on auto one uh, just because I'm shooting a lot of different settings. 
But what you might wanna do is go, I, I just shoot in natural light all the time or direct sunlight, where it's really cloudy or inside in the shade, uh, incandescent lighting, fluorescent lighting. I use a flash all the time. I wanna choose what color temperature I want and you can choose which one suits your necessary requirements. Then we have auto bracketing, which I don't really use, but all of these, multiple exposure, view memory card info, which isn't that exciting to be honest, Wi-Fi connection and monitor and view brightness, I, a secondary uses, I don't use them a lot, but I just have them there because I've got to fill up these, this bottom row with something. Now it is worth saying that sometimes some of the functions you want to work, use on your camera don't work. And the reason they don't work is they conflict with other functions that you have set. Sometimes it's hard to determine what they are. And so it's always handy to change your mode around, to change your autofocus mode around and to fiddle with those things to see if it releases the item and functionality that you want. Your camera's not broken. You don't have to send away, you don't have to freak it out. You can always jump on Google and just type in, why isn't this working? And someone in the world that's very helpful have already told you the answer that you can then just employ and work out why it doesn't work. Same with menu items grayed out, it's because that option is not available on the current settings that you have on your camera. No need to freak out, take a breath, hit up Google, you'll be good. Now on the back of your camera, you have a plus and a minus button. That is good when you're on playback and you can zoom out. You see that, you zoom out, and you can see all your photographs like this, easier to navigate through. You can also use this to navigate through those photos. It's just a setting, again, uh, through this video, and you access that through the play button. If you want to delete something, you press delete here, and it gives you the option to delete it by pressing that again. It's always cameras are very uh, cautious about you deleting your stuff, and rightly so. The plus and minus, the other thing it does is when you're shooting, you can actually plus and zoom in on something. You can put your camera or your lens to manual focus and make sure that is spot on focused and then you can just shoot away. So it's really handy if it's like Astro or something, a bird a long way away that you really want to get in focus, use the plus button and you can see it just magnifies. It won't do anything for your images. It's not, it's sort of an, uh, a digital zoom that's built in. If you're not actually zooming in, you are just uh, zooming in on what you can see to take a better image as it reverts back to what it was. So don't be fooled that it's a somehow a digital zoom that works in body to give you closer ups. You'll need to crop your photo afterwards. As you crop your photo, know that the quality decreases every time you crop a photograph. The final two little buttons that I use all the time and I love are these two, they're tucked in here. And you might have seen them already and wondered what they actually are. So right where your fingers are, and my first one I use for playback, I set for playback, and the second I use for continuous or stable focus on the back wheel and then on the front wheel, I change what my uh, focus matrixing is. And so I find having those two there, I can do all of that with this without taking my eyes away from the screen or looking at something else. So I'd encourage you to investigate what these two buttons can do. They're a custom uh, setting and the video here will just uh, walk you through how you do that. But gosh, you, you speed up your flow of photography and your confidence in photography if you have those two little buttons activated to what you feel is the best for you. Guys, I hope this has been helpful. I've been planning this video for ages because I wanted to help those of you that have bought a Z5 and you're not making the most out of it and you're not sure what to do and how to do it so if you have any questions if your camera's driving you bonkers and you're like just need some help with this you can put them in the comments below if you love this i'd really appreciate you subscribing to the channel there's a little thanks button down there that you can hit up if you so choose and it's just been a delight to help you in this space it, the z5 is I reckon the best entry level full frame camera you can buy. So you've made the right decision in buying it, but there's so much more to learn about it. So uh, stay tuned to the channel. You can flick around, see what other videos I have. I really appreciate you watching and giving me your time and attention today. And I hope I've been able to help you um, yeah, reciprocate that. Uh, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. You turn your camera on with this little switch here. I know it doesn't take a YouTube video to work out how to, uh, YouTube is not the band. It'd be cool if it wasn't it. Turn that on just uh, I can't think of a YouTube song song like oh man. Let's edit that bit out. The streets have no name. There we go. <laughs> Got there in the end. Sorry.